Hello there. This is Being God's Obedient Servant channel. And today's lesson, we're in Psalms chapters 90 through 93. Um, if you're new to this, this is the Bible study channel where I go through the Bible in order. And we're up to the book of Psalms. So if you want to learn the Bible better and, you know, follow along as it's being read... I do recommend you know going to my channel and starting at the beginning with Genesis chapter 1. We've all learned some things as time has gone by. Like I said, it's a Bible study channel and it's not only for me to teach the Bible, it's for me to learn things as well. I you know, I've always said that you never fully learn all of the Bible. You always learn something new. You can't really study at one time and get everything. You know, it's like I've went through the Bible over 15, between 15 to 20 times. I can't remember exactly how many times. But, you know, I st I'm still learning new things. Some people, they learn more by reading than others. You may be like me with a little bit of dyslexia and, you know, need a little bit of help of learning and retaining things. But yeah, we went through a lot, a lot of things I've learned that the churches don't teach no more. I know they used to at one point in time because you can look at pictures of old and see women dressed appropriately. Even in churches today, most women don't dress modestly and properly. I mean, even in the church, they're supposed to adorn a head covering. You know, actually almost everywhere a woman is to adorn a head covering now, I ain't saying it's got to be a burqa or anything like that. You know, we got to cover your whole face. It's just like the Amish and the Mennonites, they do it because they know the Bible commands it because we're commanded to pray everywhere. And the Bible says a woman is to adorn a head covering while praying and prophesying, and a man is not to adorn a head covering while praying and prophesying. And so... The only time you see, like, the Amish and stuff wear their hats is when they're working in the fields. I think the Mennonites do the same thing. You know, it protects them from the sun, so it has a purpose. It isn't done for fashion or anything. But before they say a prayer or anything else, those hats come off. You know, indoors, those hats aren't worn, stuff like that. You know, it's, it's not... Uh, it's like nowadays you see a bunch of people wearing ball caps backwards or forwards or sideways, whatever they're wearing it as or anything else. You know, it's more of a fashion statement more than anything because they do it for looks. They don't do it for functionality. It's all about the looks now. But anyways, you know, there's multiple things like the rules of the woman, the rules of the man. I'm going to go through them real quickly. And, you know, we've already went through these. If you've been following along, you've done, read most of these. Some things we haven't gotten to yet, like a New Testament. But Jesus never ended the rules God put down for the woman, for the role of the woman. In fact, he even added to it, which was the rules of the church. But, you know, I'm going to say they're in order. But here's some of the basic rules, like a, a woman was created to be her husband's helpmate. A woman is to desire her husband, and he is to rule over her. A woman is to have no authority over a man or usurp authority over a man. A woman that does not desire a husband and birthing children is useless in the eyes of the Lord. Who is the husband of the woman? The man that takes her virginity either by choice or force. A woman is not burdened with the responsibility of teaching so a woman's not allowed to be a teacher from that alone. This is in Genesis. You know, this is in the first book, you know, laying out the foundation of the rules of the woman and man. It says a woman cannot deny her husband her flesh, and a husband cannot deny his wife his flesh. Um, I might be missing some in there. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to remember them all. I think I got the majority of them there. But then there's rules of the man. God says if a man has a good wife, he's the love, honor, and cherisher, for she is a gift. But for God to call a woman a good wife, she must adhere to the rules of the woman. 
And most women today, even in churches, they don't obey these things. They're like, yeah, right. Not in today's time. That's what they say. Not in today's time. Today's different. But God says his words the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Which means, so are we to be like yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The type of clothing may have changed and structures and stuff like that, but the the rock foundation of Christianity and God's system hasn't changed. You know, throughout the Bible, the main teachings for the man is a man is not even to seek a wife till he has a means to provide for her and a home to put her in. That's part of being a man is not to seek a wife till he is ready to be a husband and a father. The husband is the provider, the protector, the educator, and the leader. That's the rules of the man. He's to lead his family. He's to teach his family, including his wife, what he needs her to know. That's why she's not, uh, I think I missed that part. A woman is not to receive an education. She's to be taught by her husband what he needs her to know so she's a better assistant for him. Yeah, that's one of them I missed. Another rule for the woman. Women today, they want to have college educations. They want to have careers, degrees, and this, that, and the other. And God says, no, that's not the purpose of the woman. The woman is to know her place, and the man is to know his place. So even today, you have churches talking about sending, you know, people in churches talking about sending their daughters to college. I'm like, what? And this is coming from the you know, preachers, deacons, and bishops type people, the, you know, the elders in the church. I'm like, they're not even adhering to the Word of God. They're like, well, in today's time, it's like, they know today's time. Today's time ain't no different than day one. Not supposed to be when it comes to following God. And this is how you know to spot a hypocrite. Those who hear the word of God and say, oh, yes, okay, I need to adhere to these things because I'm commanded to do so. And you got others says they're always trying to find a way to go around the word of God. You know, they're always trying to find a loophole. It's like, well, is it, is it really supposed to be today? Let me talk to a couple of preachers until I hear what I want to hear. You know, that's how they do things. But that part about a woman, a man seeking a wife, that means dating. And how many of us teenage boys went out there trying to find dates? You know, fornication, that's a sin. But yet, young boys full of hormones are taught to go out there and date and hoping to reach some, you know, first, second, third, or home plate or any of that, you know, the, you know, those are old school talking about, you know, what base did you get to? But, you know, that's not, that's not allowed because dating is to seek a wife. You know, if you got all this energy from your hormones and you should be out there making money and saving up money so you're ready to provide for a family. But these things aren't being taught anymore. People aren't being responsible anymore. You know, and it comes from our upbringing. And it starts with the elders of the church. When did they start going away from the word of God and just saying pretty messages to get money in the offering plate because they turned the church instead of a calling, they try to make it a career. And this is what we're dealing with today. And it's bad. We, we, we've got to do a course correction. Like I talk about, we, we got we to gotta rip the band-aid off this wound and it's going to hurt because it's put on with duct tape. We may take flesh and hair off, but we're going to have to pull this thing off and get air to this wound so it can heal. And, you know, it, it, it may hurt for a while, but if we do it, and if, like, the women get out of the workforce, get out of the colleges, go back to being wives instead of, you know, trying to live for themselves, and men start being men again and being responsible and adhering to the Word of God, you know, but our churches have got to start quit being hypocrites. I get so sick and tired of hearing preachers talking about, well, you need to read the Word of God for yourself so you know what it says. I'm like, your job is also to teach all of it, not just messages that get you money and offering plate. You know, it's your job too. Like I've, like I've shown with a lot of this, it's hard to understand. Even if someone reads it, doesn't mean they're going to get it. Not the first time, and it's like, you know. But a person that wants to obey God will want to obey God. That's how you know they have the Holy Spirit, that they are good fruit, that their tree produces good fruit. 
You know, we're not to unjustly judge. That's another rule in there. But we are to know a tree by the fruit it bears. I've talked about this before. Like I said, you know, like Jesus even added to, you know, the whole thing. Like a woman must dress modestly with unbroidered hair, no gold or pearls or costly array. A woman can't change her hairstyle or hair color. She can't wear jewelry. Not supposed to scar yourself, intentionally scarring yourself so piercings and tattoos are out. And that part's in Old Testament. And so New Testament even tells, you know, this is, you know, that was in Timothy, like I said. Um, you know, Jesus telling women how to dress and be in life, you know. Like even, you know, Genesis 3.16, a woman is to desire her husband and he is to rule over her. You know, Jesus never took away the Ten Commandments. He only finished, I've talked about it before, there's, I think, for, uh, certain parts of the law. I'm sorry, well, he took away the law of the Israelites. That's all. You know, that circumcision, the dietary laws, the sacrifices for sins, and being stoned to death for sinning, and the rules of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is still there, which is Saturday. We are to, you know, keep it holy. But under Christianity today, we're to keep every day holy. Not just Sunday. Every day should is supposed to be a holy day. But, yeah, it's... Uh, but you had all those added added things about, you know, not traveling, not walking a certain distance, not doing this, not doing that, couldn't pick up sticks, you couldn't cook a meal, you couldn't whatever, you couldn't do no work whatsoever, you couldn't lift up a finger. You're supposed to just, I guess, pretty much lay there and soil, soil yourself. I don't know. <laughs> were they allowed to go to the bathroom? I'm pretty sure they were, but I'm just, you know, I said like there was a lot of strenuous rules for the Sabbath that, you know, you were stoned to death if you disobeyed. And Jesus says, no, we're not doing that no more. But you'll have some churches teaching that Sunday is the Sabbath. It's not. Like the whole Chick-fil-A thing. Well, they don't do work on the Sabbath. That would be Saturday. They should be closed Saturday. But Saturday is their money-making day. <laughs> it's like, we're closed on Sunday because that's church day. And I'm like, okay, well, that's church day. But the Sabbath is actually Saturday. I said you got, you got everybody in America. They're getting they're they're very confused because they literally believe Sunday is the Sabbath. I grew up being told the same thing. Till I found out it's not. Like I listened to Pastor uh, Charles Lawson out of Knoxville, Tennessee. He even says no, the Sabbath is Saturday. He'll tell everybody. You know, he knows the truth. But even as much as I listen to him. They don't teach these parts of the Bible, the rules of the woman, the rules of the man. They're pretty much like, well, read the Bible for yourself and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Um, yeah. But it's also your job is to teach all of the word. You know, anybody that teaches the word is to teach all of the word. That's the whole part of it. You know, that's a responsibility. If you, take, if you don't teach all of the Word, the Bible talks about it, it's the same thing as taken away from the Word of God. And there's punishments for that. But I said, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that isn't being taught today, and that's why I'm starting this channel. You know, it's... Uh, we're going to head and jump right on in here, though. We do have four chapters to go through. And we're already at 15, 14 minutes, almost 15 minutes, according to the timer. They're pretty pretty straightforward readings. Uh, the first one is actually a prayer. It's that the title of this one that I researched says, A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. So I was under most belief that all the Psalms were written by King David and King Solomon. And come to find out, there's a lot more in there. Well, there's quite a few in there that's <laughs> written by more than just them as i said we learn something new every day and that's how reading a bible should be we learn something new we're, we're going to learn new things all the time but let's go ahead and jump right on in here because of those other things i could be talking on that stuff for hours and it's like you know this is a bible study channel but you know part of teaching bible study is also teaching people how to recognize hypocrites 
dens of vipers. That's what, you know, if a, if a place is just teaching pretty, pretty messages and not all of the word, and they're definitely not living it, Jesus calls that place a den of vipers, a place of hypocrisy. And Old Testament and New Testament speaks of how much the Lord and Savior hates hypocrites. They literally, it's like, it's like, you know, almost the worst of the worst is a hypocrite, you know, because they're deceivers and manipulators and it helps and it kind of ruins people's lives and it hinders their following of the Lord because, you know, it's not being, you know, you're saying you're one thing and doing another. And you do this, in, you know, my parents did this in front of me as a kid and I could see that they were living that life. Now, I mean, they got straight afterwards and stuff, but they weren't taught either. You know, they were just doing what they was told, and then they learned the Bible more, and they started straightening themselves out. I said, this has been going on, and my parents were born in the 50s. So this has been going on for a long time of things not going correctly. Because even in the 50s, they were teaching wrong stuff. Like the Bible says, to live in peace, you must be with your own kind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Re <laughs> sorry. Reverse that. That's what my dad was taught. You must be with your own kind. That was the, hip you know, the false teaching. The Bible says you must be with like-minded. And my dad was probably in his 50s and 60s when he finally read that in the Bible and understood because, hey, I never see that part because he was against interracial relationships, this, that, and the other because he was raised being taught by churches that it's not allowed, that it's a sin. And he believed it his whole life. And it's, it's hard to take something you, that's your part of your core belief and then change it. But he did because he learned the truth, but it came after studying the Bible. And, you know, it's... Uh, I like to reach people kind of early in life or even if I'm reaching you late in life and helping, trying to help you out. But you, you got to read it for yourself and you got to, you got to understand more of it. But Jesus did not, uh, you know, take, say the Old Testament is no more. He only took out part of the Old Testament, which is the law of the Israelites. Everything before that and everything about the moral beliefs and how you treat other people and love one another, that all still stands. That stuff was never changed. About feeding the poor, helping the needy, that's in Old Testament. Even even law of the Israelites, that's in there. Jesus never took that part away. That still stands. He even says you're to do more of it. If they're naked, you clothe them. If they're hungry, you feed them. You know... If they need shelter, you house them. You know, we, we, if we can help the needy, we are to do this. And that's why the Bible says, if you've been blessed, you're to help those who haven't been. That's why I don't understand, like all these places, you got these multimillionaire supposedly preachers and all these other business people, this, that, and the other. They, make it, they have enough money in America alone to build every single individual a house of their own. And they would still be rich, and everyone would still have a home, and they don't do it. They say, well, you're responsible for doing that for yourself. But not if you all keep destroying our economy and they can't make enough money to do it, then you're supposed to do it for us because you all are in charge of that, you know, right? <laughs> I mean, that is the teaching of the Word of God there. But it's not being taught in the church. Everybody's saying, well, I got mine, you need to get yours. And I'm like, you know, we're not supposed to try to cleave to anything on this earth and it even teaches that you know if, if you try to hold on to things of this earth you're not following god too much because you're, you're worried about possessions more than the kingdom and so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and jump right on in here as i said wow okay now 19 minutes as i said i can be talking about this stuff for a long time and it's probably a preaching session all on its own, but um, I don't feel I was called to be a preacher. If I seem like one, um, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I said, I've, I've felt in my heart, you know, God wanted me to do this. But I am a day late and a dollar short because I didn't do this last night because I was sitting there fixing to get ready for bed. And I'm like, oh, I forgot to do the video. 
So now I had to wait till a certain time at night with my dogs resting and stuff like that to do it. But, yeah, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to mute my phone just in case I get a call. So if this goes over the 30-minute mark, which it probably will, I'm terribly sorry. But I've already got this PowerPoint set up for four chapters. They're short chapters. They're pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just going to read through them. And we got some parts that is going to be, they're going to speak to, some parts are going to speak to us big time today because our country's going through stuff like this because, like I said, we're living with a lot of hypocrisy today and a lot of people are lost and they don't know it. And they're doing wrong in the eyes of God and they don't know it. So if you, if this affects you or you know of people like this in these situations, you know, you might be able to help point them out and says, hey, you know, here you go. <laughs> Here's what the Bible says. You know, you claim to be a Christian. Part of being a Christian is to be Christ-like, and Christ has to obey the Lord. We all have to obey the Lord. If you have no desire to obey the Lord, then that shows that you more than likely don't have the Holy Spirit. But remember, everybody's dealing with strongholds and stuff too, because you got some things that's easy to give up and stop doing and some things that aren't. But the whole thing is, are you trying? Or are you saying, God, I ah, forget it. I'm going to live this way because I like it. There's your big difference. Because if you're trying to get right with God, that's like the whole goal. But you have to be in your heart and in your actual actions trying. But remember, works don't get us into heaven. It's having the Holy Spirit. It's the most crucial thing. But we are to change our lives to be righteous and to be holy and live as godly as we can. Like even in James it says, faith without works is useless. All we need is faith, but we also, there's works that goes with that faith. Things we must change and things we must do now because we're servant of the Lord. We voluntarily want to do this. But let's go ahead and jump here. Uh, chapter 90, first one. And I said, this is a prayer from Moses. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Now, if you don't understand that part, watch in the night. Um, in old times, everybody did guard duty. There was always somebody that had to stand up and stay watch because bears, wolves, stuff like that could attack in the middle of the night. If everybody's asleep, a lot of people die. A lot of people get injured because you also had uh, marauders, you know, whatever, banditos, you know, whatever you want to call them, you know, gangs, bad people. They could come upon you as well. Plus, you watched your flocks. So you herdsmen, there was always someone awake to watch the herd day and night. You know, that's what it means as a watch in the night is normally it's about, like when I was in the military, you normally did one or two hours shift, and then it rotated. But that's what it's talking about here for, you know, a thousand years in God's eyes is just as, you know, just as short as a watch in the night. Because remember from the early parts, a thousand years is like a day and a day is like a thousand years. That's what it means if you didn't know what, what a part, you know, as, as a watch in the night would mean. But that's what it's in reference to. Some of you are saying, we got it, move on. But yeah, let's, <laughs> let's go on now. Uh, verse 5. Thou carriest them away... As with the flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed in thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Like, remember the teachings that, you know, we can't hide anything from the Lord. 
We think our sins are being held at nighttime, you know, doing things in darkness. You know, no one sees me doing it. So God, God always sees what you're doing. That's what you're talking, you know, your secret sins. Things people don't know about, but that's in, inside you. But Verse 9. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. We knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto thy, to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish us uh, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. In chapter 91. Sorry about my dog barking. I tried to pause it quickly. My neighbor's got a little gathering going on there. And I got a dog out in the yard barking at all the cars and the movement <laughs> next door. And the other one's in the house being with me. But if she starts barking, sometimes he does too. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, continue on uh, doing 91. There's no title to the next two, this one and 92. So, as far as I know, no one knows who wrote them. But... Let's continue on here with the teaching. Uh, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I said the, these still stand today, a lot of these teachings. You've got to remember the secret place of the Most High. Where is that? That's going to be deep within the Holy Spirit. And we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So this applies to us today. Because in Old Testament, a lot of people weren't given the Holy Spirit. Only a very select few were given that. You know, with the Holy Spirit, some of us are prophets. Some of us are, you know, it's all different things that you could be. Um, like me, I was given the gift of foresight. Some people are given the gift of tongues. And, you know, so on and so forth. Like I can see a scenario and start, you know, being able to learn to navigate for a safer path or whatever, or what to avoid to stay out of, you know, danger situations and stuff. You know, it was one thing that I was gifted with. But anyways, I said, you know, everyone's gets a different gift with the Holy Spirit. Let's continue on verse two. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. I said that's a part of, you know, a lot of people are given the gift of foresight when it comes to that. That's, you know, that's helping deliver you, is giving you able to kind of see things as, uh, okay, well, we need to go this way because this this over here is starting to get like that, you know, whatever. Some people don't have it at all, and they just walk straight in danger, and it's like, or straight into a bad situation. So yeah, thank the Lord he gave me that gift that I have. I don't know if I would ever want to speak in tongues. I've heard of some people saying that they were given the gift of understanding it. But, you know, prophecy, that would be a good one to have. I'm not one of those. But, uh, there, are, there I don't know, I don't know if there is any really any more out there some people I've heard claim to be but let's continue on I'm sorry actually a lot of this would be
prophets because prophets pretty much are just people that the Lord speaks to and we tell others about, hey, this is what, you know, God wants. God's saying this or, you know, giving you a thing like, hey, if this may come to pass or this is, you know, but a lot of it's in God's word anyways. So all of us, I guess, in a way could be prophets because God says, I'm going to do this to your nations or allow this to happen to your nations or your families or this, that, and the other. If you do not adhere to certain things, you can bring curses upon your family and upon your land. You know, these, that, all that stuff still stands today. But anyway, let's continue on verse four. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall, come, but it shall not come nigh thee. I would say now from reading this, I've read it now, I already went through it once before and stuff. This is probably going to be something from David because this is clearly talking about war. And David saw a lot of battles, a lot. And, but his son, King Solomon, saw no battles. His whole, his whole time as king was in total peace. That was one of the gifts you know, God gave him was to have a time of peace throughout all the land. Let's continue on verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh, come nigh thy dwelling. You see, uh, we, we can even have that today because God says if you've added to the work of God, you can add plagues upon yourself and, you know, whatever, your, your area. And if you take away from the word of God, you know, you can be denied the tree of life or your name could be blotted out of the book of life. It says that as well. That's why it's very crucial you don't skip anything. Verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Chapter 92. I said this one also didn't have a title. I'm sorry. This one, I'm sorry, this one did have one. This is called a psalm or song for the Sabbath day. So, 92 verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. Yeah, because I said that though God's word, it does go very deep, and it's like, you know, meanings and teachings and everything else and understandings you have to really study it and want to know it and it's like it, it, it's it's yeah they said like oh that's very deep you know when you have a saying or something god's word is very much that but people that are abusive and brutish 
and people are they're very foolish and whatever living for today and not building any rewards in heaven and stuff like that god god considers those foolish people you know they don't understand it they don't understand that you know where where to build for tomorrow especially you know prepping up things for our families and teaching our children stuff and everything else so that they have an easier better life than we did that's how we ended up with the western society that we have today is because people wanted to keep building and make things easier and better but the sad part is now it's being perverted and used against people because now you got a lot of people that don't even know where milk comes from they, it's at the store you ain't got to kill animals you can just go to the grocery store and buy meat they have no they have no clue of what a slaughterhouse is or that the stuff comes from a farm or a ranch they just oh, the grocery store that's all they know they're not being taught anything. It's like, I'm like, yeah, we, we've kind of uh, went the wrong direction. But uh, Verse 7. When the wicked springs as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high for every, forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall be, uh, shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. So here's that part talking about, you know, even in New Testament it says these things, you know, people that do wickedness and everything else. In Revelation, it says, many who call the Lord their Lord will be cast into the lake of fire. It says, they will be proclaiming, but Lord, I did these things in your name. You know, these are like the people that, you know, women that want to do charities and do all these bake sales, this, that, and the other, instead of serve their husbands because they're trying to do good works to get in, saying, look how good I am, look how good I am. But they tend to forget, you know, that's, you know, their purpose is their husband's. Now, say the husband's doing a charity and the wife's helping him, well, then that's a different story. But you got a lot of women, they want to do stuff without the husband. And that is a way, way wrong answer. And so, those, you know, they said those are workers of iniquity. And God says, you, are, you, know, you doers of iniquity, be gone, for I never knew you. And he cast them into the lake of fire. continue on here verse 11 mine eye also shall see my desire in mine enemies and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree he shall grow like a cedar in lebanon those that be planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the courts of our god they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no up unrighteousness in him. So it's that part also we're commanded to, you know, we're not just commanded to respect elders. That's supposed to be a society thing, but the elders are supposed to be leading the way. But we also are to know a tree by the fruit it bears. If it's a hypocrite elder, you're not to follow that. You're to point it out. It says, hey, you live like this and do this and say this, but you're, you're, you're going against the word of God, blah, blah, blah. You know, it doesn't matter if somebody is older than you in that aspect. Whenever they're living foolishly or brutish or, you know, or in iniquity. But the upright elders... You know, they bring a lot of they bring a lot of fruit because it used to be in old days, it was your grandparents or great grandparents, whichever one, they taught the little children. Cause they didn't have the physical ability to keep doing work. So they were in the house helping cook, clean, or whatever. But, you know, even that they'd be sitting in a rocking chair on the porch, whittling away. The old man would be with the little boys sitting around and and the grandmother be in the kitchen or whatever. 
or in the other parts of the room that we teach them how to sew clothes and do men clothes to make. They used to make their own clothes. They used to make their own thread and then make their own fabric and make their own clothes. But we changed all that by now have machines doing it. So we've lost all that knowledge on how to make a spinning wheel and everything else and turn material into thread and then turn that into fabric. You know, we've lost that knowledge. It's like I, I used to work on spinning machines, so I understand how it works, but... You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't even think I could build one, not a very effective one, but still. I'm just saying, like, you know, the the elders would then teach the young ones, then the young ones would grow up, and then when they're at a certain age, they go work in the fields with the father, and the father was taught by his father, and so he was taught at a young age. So by the time he's of a man of having a family, he's got a lot more to teach his children because he learned more than what his father taught him because you're supposed to progress as the years go and makes make everything better but now no one's teaching anything because the children aren't following in the footsteps of their parents no more and in nowadays a lot of people you don't want to do that because the parents didn't live right but you know either or i'm just saying we got to pull off the band-aid and you know do a course correction to get things right if we want things to get better we're going to have to do this but Let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, last chapter, chapter 93. This is the whole chapter here, so there's only the five verses. And um, but yeah, this one doesn't have a title. So I don't. I'm, as we read through it, maybe we can kind of figure out who wrote it. So let's go ahead and get started here. Chapter 93. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. I'll say when you're talking about floods and waves and stuff, I think we're more or less going back to um, Moses. Might be another one from Moses. Because he wrote the first book, first five books of the uh, Bible, the Old Testament. So he wrote, he, he's the one that wrote down in scrolls, you know, what God told him about Noah and the ark and everything of that. And so that's, uh, that would have been God, God used floods to destroy everything. And even with him, you know, parting the seas so they can walk on dry land and then bring the waters back to crush the enemy. That would have been very relevant, you know, to him at that time. But like I said, that was the end of the lesson. That was the last one. It was a very that was a very short one. That's why I left it in there. Only one page, but I hope you did enjoy the lesson. Um, as I said, there's everybody has roles. Everybody has a purpose on this earth. As also in New Testament, Jesus says, you know, children, honor thy father and thy mother. Fathers, do not bring your children to wrath, for you will cause them to be discouraged. Wives, submit and obey your husbands. Servants, do your work as if you're doing it for the Lord, not for men. And masters, do right by your servants, for ye also have a master in heaven. Our whole society can be fixed by that alone. By that alone, our whole society could be fixed if we just adhere to that part i'm trying to remember if that's also in timothy or it's in new testament i think that, i think that part's also in timothy there's a lot in timothy i think there's also the good good amount in uh colossians or is it corinthians oh ah, my dyslexia kicks in i can't remember the names of everything at times but as i said there's a lot of stuff in the bible that's not being adhered to. You know. 
It's like women don't even care about, you know, that God commands, uh, that Christ commands the rules of the church. And he says a woman is to learn in silence in the church. And now you got women thinking that they can run the church. You got women preachers and priests and pastors, this, that, and the other. I'm like, you're clearly going against the word of God. We can do it today. That's what you hear these feminists do say, you know. Remember, feminism is Satanism. It tells women to be the opposite of what God commands a woman to be. So always remember that. So just because women say you can or society says you can, if God says you can't, you don't do it. I mean, even by the word of God, a woman is to have no authority over a man. That means women are not even allowed to vote. Because uh, two women can, you know, turn away another man's vote if he votes differently than they do. So you got two women voting Democrat, one man votes Republican, then his vote is cast out and her vote stands over his. You know, there's a reason why God has things in place is so we don't fall to the wayside. But we are falling to the wayside and we got to do a course correction. We want to fix things and things are getting there. You can see things starting. Um, but, you know, I hope it gets better quicker because what's going on these last few years, it's, uh, it's getting pretty bad. It's uh, Life's getting a whole lot harder for a lot of people, and you got a lot of people now being a home buyer is pretty much not even going to be a thought. They, they probably don't even see themselves having enough money to afford a studio apartment in a lot of places. When I was growing up, a studio apartment was normally $100 or less than that a month for a studio apartment. I think the most I ever rented one for, because I have lived in them before, I think I was about 300 bucks. And that covered uh, everything except electricity. So water and all this other stuff was covered in it. And this was in Arizona where swamp coolers was uh, chillers and stuff were, was the uh, air conditioning. So you even got that for free. That was like part of the service. So you just had your basic electric stuff. Um, you know, hot water heater, stove, you know, lights. I think my electric bill was average maybe 40, 50 bucks a month. Wasn't much. Some people were like, really? When was this? This was in probably, uh, I think you know, around 2008, 2009. I was living in Arizona then, in Phoenix area. So yeah, it wasn't that long ago. But now prices are way up and so we, we got to do a course correction we got to start but remember if you're a boss you're to treat your employees the way you want god to treat you because you remember masters do right by your servants for you also have a master in heaven but if you're a worker and you have a job you got to remember the bible also says you are to do your work as if you're doing it for christ himself not for a human being doesn't matter what your job is, unless your job is actually sinful stuff and whatever, then you ain't supposed to be doing that at all, but still. Even if you're just flipping burgers somewhere, you're supposed to be like, I'm making this burger for Christ. That's how good you should make that hamburger. You should do that type for everything you do. If you're a carpet installer, you're installing in Christ's house. You know, If you're fixing cars or this, that, and the other, anything you're doing, you're supposed to, Christ owns this. That's I'm, I'm doing this for Christ. That's what that means. That's how, yeah, that's how good quality of work you should always do. Maybe we can get America fixed. Maybe not. But if you're in another country listening to this, you know, God will help your land as well. It's just, you know, as a majority, you got to turn, turn to the Lord. As the Bible says, if you repent and turn from your wicked ways and call upon the Lord, if you are one of his and call upon him, he will hear you and uh, heal your lands. 
I know I didn't say it word for word, but but you do have to be one of his. You have to have the Holy Spirit or he does not hear you. The Bible says that he does not hear the prayers of, you know, what was that word? Of the heathens, that's it. That's what God considers everybody that's not blessed with the Holy Spirit, not one of his, you're a heathen. Because you're going to live worldly and you're going to embrace worldliness. And we're to try to help educate those people and spread the gospel so that they can get saved. If they refuse the if you they refuse the word of God, Christ also says, do not cast pearls upon swine. You're to leave that place, knock the dust of that place off your shoes as you leave, because that place is condemned. Well, that's what they said to the disciples for the for like an entire city. If you went to an entire city and no one there wanted to hear the word of God. But if there's only if there's just one, you know, that one person can help change that whole city around. If there's just one you can save, you, you, know, you help spread the gospel. But we're at the 50-minute mark. Sorry for taking so long in the beginning, but uh, like I said, in that area, I could be on that stuff for hours talking about, you know, the how America is just, you know, going backwards. We're not, we're not going towards, as a country, we're not walking towards God. We're going the other way. We're following the world. And if we don't do a course correction, this nation will perish. We will be consumed by someone greater. Because that's what God allows to happen to nations that he builds up, that quit serving him. He lets them be taken over by, a, by you know, bad people. He doesn't, you know, most we're looking at, is, you know, China and Russia beating us and then ruling over us in America or most of all of Europe too because Russia really wants all of Europe uh, well the dictators do the Russian people probably could care less they just they just want to live their lives most of them don't want anything to do with that communism crap they just want to live their lives and a lot of Chinese people kind of the same way but it's only the governments that's the ones that the, there's people that desire power that's what people got to watch out for people that desire power can't trust them even here in America that's like you women that want to be politicians and judges police officers and all this other thing of leadership God says a woman is to have no authority over a man so it means you can't have none of those positions I don't care how much you call yourself a Christian you ain't one if you desire those positions because that ain't your place but anyways I said I'm going to end this lesson here as I said talking about other stuff I can be on it for hours and so I gotta gotta cut myself off here. <laughs> it's been almost an hour already. Like I said, hope you enjoyed the lesson. And also remember to pray. If you're one of the Lords, He hears your prayer, and we need our prayers to help give us strength and guidance every day. Also, we gotta give thanks to the Lord in everything. That's a commandment. We're to give Lord the thanks of everything of our life, even the bad parts. That's a hard one. To, that's a hard pill to swallow. I've talked about that before. You're having a bad day and this puts you in a bad mood and you're saying words and being a certain way that you ain't supposed to be. You're supposed to give thanks to the Lord. Why? It lets you know where you're weak at. You know, what you need to work on. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. I ain't going to lie. I'm guilty of that bad. I need prayers for helping me with that. But I'm getting better. It's a very slow process for some of us, but I'm getting better. I hope you all are too. So until next time, God bless. Good night. Goodbye.